hi welcome to this tutorial on spring mbc so this is the first video about spring mbc and i'm going to cover all the components all the concept behind spring mbc and i'm also going to create an e-commerce application demo application when i cover all different concepts and different component of spring mbc so this video is about the some theory part so actually i am going to start from basic servlet application and then uh, if you see uh, this is the agenda of this uh, this video so first i, I will discuss a uh, normal servlet jsp mbc architecture then why we move to servlet mbc and what is the difference of servlet mbc and servlet jsp and then i will discuss the spring mbc detail and advantages of Spring MVC. So let's get started. So first, discuss about servlet JSP architecture. So for servlet JSP architecture, so this is the architecture we generally follow. So from the browser, we request when we hit a request, then it firstly goes to controller, and then after the controller, uh, it will come back to particular view. So so this is a model view architecture here for storing the view components we use JSP. It means the HTML part will be the JSP page and controller will be our servlet. So controller is an action that of uh, particular form while we hit uh, any uh, any sub button submit button from any of the JSP page. So that particular action is as is an controller. So that controller will be handled by servlet and servlet will handle all different controllers and then we need to create a different servlets for different controllers. So and for model we use Pojo classes and Java beans for the model and business logic. So this this is the architecture we, old architecture we followed actually. And so so here the application is also separated into different uh, model view component and there is a loose coupling between the model view and controllers but uh, but spring mbc provides us a better way of doing it actually spring mbc Pro is a framework which which actually handle all request response in better ways and it will provide us a, a different a different others integration with the different uh, applications so we can integrate spring mbc with a guest api and uh, so if we see the difference of the spring mbc and jsp servlet applications so these are the some some of the uh, advantages of spring mbc and disadvantages of servlet jsp mbc architecture so Servlet are based upon low level API for handling request and response. Uh, while the web framework like Spring MBC are designed to make web applications which handle HTTP request response in easier way. So, uh, so first advantage is of the Spring MBC is it's a very easy to create the application in Spring MBC as compared to Servlet JSP applications. So other advantages is lots of code. So using servlet, we have to handle all the details manually. Uh, you you have to get very little help with typical web stuff like validation, REST, request response body, JSON, form binding, etc. So you will end up writing lot of utility code to support your web applications. So it means while we have a Servlet JSP application so to, to integrate with to uh, to get a, a small component uh, we have to write lot of code it may be to upload a file we have to write lot of code uh, to integrate with the web service we have to write lot of codes uh, so uh, so there so the Spring MEC is a good framework which will provide us all these facilities so we have to write very less code in Spring MVC. So other disadvantages of Spring servlet applications uh, is uh, so so web framework on the other hands 
I designed to make all of this stuff simple. With Spring MEC, you are not bothered with manually handling the request and response, even though you can still get access to them if you need to. So, uh, so for example, want to return a JSON in Spring MEC, just add a response body annotation. Spring will append it. So it means when uh, when we have a JSON components in Spring MEC, we have to just use the res response body. Uh, annotations and and we, for example we have a variable dynamic variable so we we can use path variable annotation so there are a lot of things uh, in spring mec we can use form program annotation to get the parameter uh, from the form uh, so 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 also it, it is very good integrated with the restful web services uh, we have to the validation is also very easy in Spring MVC. So we can bind the object to particular form and then we can dynamically get all the form parameter in Spring MVC. So these are the some of the advantages of Spring MVC as compared to servlet JSP application. So let's talk about the Spring architecture, uh, Spring MVC architecture. So this is the main Spring MVC architecture. So we have here four components. Uh, so if we see the main component is dispatcher servlet. So dispatcher servlet is just an entry point of Spring MVC application. So it will be uh, uh, it's a servlet that will be declared into web web dot XML file, and all the request will be redirected to particular URL after the uh, this such a servlet. Uh, so if we see, uh, we have handler mapping, we have controller, view resolver, and view. So, so the if we if we check the flow, first whenever we receive a HTTP request, the dispatch servlet consult the HTTP mapping, and it will call the particular controller. So handler mapping is actually a map which store all different uh, controller of the application. So dispatcher sublet will check a particular mapping from handler mapping and then handler mapping will call particular particular controller. So, so so the controller take the request and call the appropriate service method based on the get and post request and the service method will set model data based on defined business logic and return view name to the dispatcher sublet. Uh, so after that the uh, dispatcher servlet will take help from the view resolver to pick up the defined view for the request. Once once the view is finalized, the dis dispatcher servlet pass the model data to the view which is finally ended on the browser. Uh, so this is a general flow. So first the dispatcher servlet will check the particular mapping from the handler, handler mapping, then handler mapping will call the controller and from the controller uh, it will actually resolve particular view on a view resolver and then pass it to the view. So for the controller we have separate annotation for view resolver we have different classes and handler mapping is also interface uh, which dispatcher sublet will dynamic uh, will actually uh, get dynamically. So so there is very less configuration uh, is used to this architecture. So so we'll check about some of the advantages of Spring MVC. So if we see the Spring MVC is very lightweight, that is the first advantage. Advantages. So Spring MVC is lightweight framework. There is no performance issue in Spring-based web application. And the second advantage is high performance. The Spring MVC is productive framework which can boost your development. And it is uh, the third advantage is it is secure, fully secure. That's why most of the online banking applications are devolved using Spring MVC. Spring Security is a great API to enterprise great security implementation. So the fourth advantage is MVC supported, as it is based on MVC. It is a great way to devolve modular modular web application, and it. The uh, it's for TD 
and fully supported for test driven development technique so it means any spring application is tested with driven we can uh, we can run the jnu test cases and then we can define and create the jnu test it is well integrated with the jnu also so it is fit with the agile develop, development and road separation and rest full service support uh, that i already uh, discussed it is well integrated with the rest food AT, api so these are the actually advantages of spring mbc and and that's all about uh, the theory part of the spring mbc and in my next video i'm going to create the uh, application using the spring mbc a demo application and then in using that application i will be covering all different concepts behind the spring mbc and how we can integrate it with hibernate and how we can uh, call particular controller and how request mapping work how we can resolve the view and then uh, so i will be creating a small application for that so thanks for watching i will see you in next video bye bye